Uh, I know I am speaking a marvelous accent without the slightest English. Now, <laughs> you, know, you know what the top category was? 78% of these American youngsters were concerned as they expressed it themselves with finding a meaning and purpose in their lives. So this is a realistic, a realistic view on man. And you know, you won't believe it, gray, uh, gray hair, my age, I started taking flying lessons recently. Do you know what my flying instructor told me? If you are starting here, wish to get here, say east, heading for this, and you have a crosswind, you will drift and you will land here. So you have to do what we pilots call uh, crabbing, he told me, C-R-A-B, crabbing. You have to head for north of this uh, uh, airfield, air and you have to fly that way, you see, as if you headed in this direction. If you are heading here above this airfield, then you will actually land here. But if you head for here, you are landing here. This holds also for man, I would say. If we, if we take man as he really is, we make him worse. But if we overestimate him, it's premature your applause, you will soon know why. If we, if we seem to be idealists and are overestimating, overrating man, and looking at him that high, here above. You know what happens? We promote him to what he really can be. So we have to be idealists in a way, because then we wind up as the true, the real realists. And you know who has said this? If we take man as he is, we make him worse. But if we take man as he should be, we make him capable of becoming what he can be, this was not my flight instructor, this was not me, this was Goethe. He said this verbally. And now you will understand why I in one of my writings once said, this is the most apt maxim and motto for any psychotherapeutic activity. So if you don't recognize a young man's will to meaning, man's search for meaning, you make him worse, you make him dull, you make him frustrated, you still add and contribute to his frustration.